So you want to be a success? Well, let's test and see how you're doing. Stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And last time we got together, we took the first half of the English test of success, where we have some words that can be somewhat ambiguous instead of using them as a noun or as a verb. Sometimes one is better than the other. Let's kind of pick it up right where we left off. The next word we want to focus on is pay. If you want to increase your pay, you have to say to yourself, what am I willing to do to pay the price? Have you asked yourself that question? Key question. Practice. One of the things that you know, we talk about is he has a very, or she has a very successful practice. You know how you get to have a very successful practice? By practicing! That's how. You have to do something so that you're so good at it that you're able to do it subconsciously. And when you're able to do something subconsciously, what happens is that you can then focus on the responses that you're getting from those people that are around you to whom you're making your presentation as an example. All right, so practice makes perfect as they say. So drill, practice, and rehearse until your motions, your activities become subconscious so that you don't have to think about them. You can be thinking about what's important, which is the response of your audience. And to do this, one of the things you have to do is to create a process. And when you create a process, that's a method, a system to get something done. As an example, do you have a wake-up process? You've heard me go over many, many times. My wake-up process is I give myself that quiet thinking time first thing every morning. But so in order to have a process, you have to process your activities, the noun and the verb. Question. One of the things that makes a person an outstanding achiever is not that they're answering a particular question, but rather that they're answering the right question. Are you getting to the heart of the matter? And you have to question in your mind if the basics are on target. If the basics are on target, then you can ask a pertinent question that's going to help you to achieve your desired outcome. Always remember to question the questioner. Question the questioner because if they're starting from a basic premise and that premise is not true, as an example, you know, the, the sun revolves around the earth. That was what people thought for centuries until science said, you know, I think it was Isaac Newton said, it's the other way around. The earth revolves around the sun. So if you want, you have to, to answer great questions, question the questioner and make sure that the basic foundation, the basic premise is on target. One of the things that people always talk about is if you want to be successful, you have to step out of your comfort zone. Because if you just keep doing what you're comfortable doing, you're going to continue to get the very same results. And that involves taking risk. The risk that you take can be financial risk. The risk that you can take can be verbal abuse from those people around you, even from your own parents, people that love you dearly, say, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're nuts. You know, you don't want to do that. You, you know, the education system in the mind's eye of parents, of most parents, is, you know what, if you go and you do scholarly things and earn top grades, then you're very smart and you're not going to be taking any risks to be an achiever. Well, sit down with somebody that's a super achiever and you'll find out that did they take a risk? You bet they did. And not only did they take risks, but they failed many times taking the risk. Make sense? If you want to be on a roll, if you want to have momentum, if you want to be moving, 
you know, like a locomotive going through, you know, a block of wood on the tracks, you have to be rolling. So before you can be on a roll, you have to be rolling yourself, which is similar to if you want to go on a run, you got to be running. <laughs> Make sense? All right. Next thing, let's talk about sense. Right? We hear, often hear people talk about common sense. And to me, the more accurate term is uncommon sense because very few people have it. But the point is, if you want to be an achiever, you have to have the common sense and you also have to have the ability to sense, to know when the timing is right, to know when to act. That is a critical factor in people's achievement is not only do they have to have the right idea, they have to take the right action, but you have to sense when the right time is. And what some people say, well, that's common sense to do that. Like I said, it's more uncommon sense than common sense. Start. I've gone over this. This is my number one pet peeve. Why? Because the number one thing that prevents people from achieving the success they desire and deserve is procrastination. At the end of people's lives, if you ask them, what are your biggest regrets? I didn't do this, I didn't do that. It wasn't that I did this and that was wrong, it was I didn't do this, I should have done it, I should have taken the risk, I should have gotten, gotten started. In order to get started, you have to have a starting line. There has to be a place to start. So there has to be in your mind the noun, this is where I start. And then you have to take a step, get your body in motion, and start. And then what's going to happen, of course, as we've gone over many times on this channel, you're going to run into a roadblock. And when you do, you repeat the process. You develop a new starting line, and then you know what you do? You start again until you get to the finish line. Start 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 study are you do you want to be someone like you know he's a really good case study on that particular subject you know what one of the things that people want to be success they want to do it like they're watching on TV they want to binge watch they want to do everything all at once boom I've got it it's done I'm, I'm the man I'm the woman whatever in order to achieve more, one of the things you have to have is a basic understanding of the foundation. If you don't have a basic understanding of the foundation, then you cannot expand upon that. That, to me, is the virtue of our school system. You know, Eli, I'm not so worried that you, know, you don't get an A plus in this and an A plus in that, so on and so forth. I'm much more concerned with your thinking process, how you think. And, be, and why is that? Because you, know, if you, know, you can't know everything. The amount of knowledge in the world doubles every two and a half years. You can't possibly know everything. So, but the point is, you have to know something about your specialty, a basic foundational knowledge in order to advance it to the next level and you know people that are you know admired as being like the great inventors they know the basics and then they said this is where we are this is where we can be you cannot visualize extraordinary unless you're first able to visualize ordinary trust okay you know do you are you the recipient of trust from other people do they trust you do you trust them in order to receive trust the noun you have to give trust it's a two-way street and that is most prevalent I find at the workplace you have people that are in the higher echelon positions, you know, you act, you know, they actually hired these people that are working with them, and 
they don't trust that they're going to do a good job, yet they expect the people at that level to trust them. It doesn't work that way. It's a two-way street. It's a reciprocal agreement. So let me give you a kind of a case in point. You have someone you've put in a particular position and you've decided that you're going to delegate a particular job or function or whatever to that person to do. So you sit down with them and you say, this is the end result that I want to achieve. Can you do that? Fine. They say they can. You trust them to do that. Don't give them the game plan to do it if you trust that they have the capability of performing. Let them formulate their own game plan. Trust in them. That's how they will grow. It's okay to you know, make sure that you say what you expect and it's okay to inspect along the way, but give them the free reign, unless you see a catastrophe happening, all right, but give them the free reign to make mistakes so that they can grow, so that they can learn, and you know what happens when you give that trust? You get that trust back and you'll find that your organization will grow at a very rapid rate once everybody is trusting each other. When people don't trust, all they do is the minimum. And if you want people to do the maximum, if you want people to exceed expectations, then trust them to make the right decision. Okay, we're going to close with two of them. The first one is if you want to change your act, guess what? You've got to act yourself. If you don't take any action, your act is going to remain the same. And that is how people are going to visualize you. You know, I'll tell you something kind of funny. You know, back in the day when I was, you know, in high school and college, you know, my nickname was Pistol. Here's the Pistol. All right, as a basketball player. And a couple of years ago, uh, I saw a, a, a gentleman that I, you know, was not super close friends with when we were young, but we, were, we went to school all, all together, you know, the whole nine yards, all the way from grammar school, kindergarten, all the way through high school. So somebody that I knew, you know, and I palled around with him and so on, you know, but I hadn't seen him in about, I don't know if I say 30 years. Would that because he was visiting another friend of mine that he was very close with, and we were both in the same location. So he said, "Hey, you know, Eli's dad. Did you remember Scotty?" He said, "Of course." You know. So the first thing Scotty says to me is, "So, Pistol, you playing a lot of ball?" Okay. I mean, here I am. I'm older. Okay. And I said, "Well, you know, not really. I'm not really playing a lot of ball now." Okay. People kind of remember you as you were. So if you want that act to change, one of the things is you have to take action. And the last one I want to talk about with you today is your work product. What is it that generates a work product? I'll give you a hint. It's a four letter word to most people. That word is work. You've got to define what you want your work product to be, and then you've got to work hard to get to it. Okay, so anyway, that's the end of our little English test for today, and I hope you passed. So, but wanted to give you some things to think about. Wanted to give you some things to think about. And in order to think about things, guess what you have to do? You gotta think! And as always, hey, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.